Children's museums support foundational development, human connection and increase cross-cultural competency and social awareness in a unique and profound way. By helping children make sense of the world and think critically through interactive, hands-on multi-sensory learning experiences. We visited the Louisiana Children's Museum, based in New Orleans, and discovered how outdoor music is used in play. Built in 2019, the museum is situated on an eight and a half acre site in New Orleans City Park. Today, the museum embraces its natural surroundings with an outside space designed to be a social, cultural and learning resource for children and families. The space includes the cattails and Liberty Bells and also a unique music hummock, a wooded area with lots of small trees where a dozen of percussion plays babel drums are placed at different heights to encourage intergenerational play. My name is Lauren Amard, I go by Lola as well, and um, I'm Arts and Culture Director here at the Louisiana Children's Museum. This is a really beautiful place. Um, where did the idea for the instruments come from, putting instruments outside? Yes, well, you know, in New Orleans, of course, music is a huge part of our culture, and um, arts and culture with music included is one of our um, core impact areas here at the museum. So I know that they really wanted to make sure all of the um, impact areas were represented not only inside of the museum, but out in our outdoor spaces. And we have the Babel drums here in the music hummock. Um, how did that come about? And what was the reaction to the children when, when they saw and discovered these instruments? Yes, I think there is definitely a delight in discovering, you know, these shiny drums within this wooded glen and they come across it and it's an unexpected surprise that just immediately um, invites curiosity and interaction. The drums all positioned at different heights. What was behind that? Uh, I think that was a very clever way to invite people of all ages to interact with them. Um, not only children of different heights and sizes and ages, but um, you know all of the parents, grandparents, uh, older siblings that come and interact you know, with the young kids here at the museum. And there's a lot of really young kids there. I mean, how important is, you know, for early years, children, how important is music for their learning? I think it's it's a, it's hugely important and especially having the drums out in nature being able to connect the patterns and the sounds that you find in nature and able to recreate them um, you know develop motor skills and and go on maybe to play musical instruments but um, not only that in the future just you know and enhancing every part of learning The Association of Children's Museums, otherwise known as the ACM, champions children's museums worldwide. With more than 470 members in 50 states and 11 countries, ACM is the world's foremost professional society supporting and advocating on behalf of children's museums and those who work at and otherwise sustain them. A pivotal role of the ACM is leveraging the collective knowledge of children's museums and they're seeing more and more museums discover the transformative effect of outdoor music. This year, we visited their show held in Madison, Wisconsin. We had the opportunity to explore with the ACM's executive director the importance of music in children's museums. Arthur Affleck, and I am executive director of the Association of Children's Museums. As uh, your uh, listeners may know, we have hundreds of children's museums, over 400, all 50 states and in 11 countries. Um, they are all unique in so um, many, uh, many ways because what they typically do is to reflect their local community uh, and to uh, address local needs. It's really interesting hearing how museums are reflecting the needs of communities. We're seeing children's museums embrace music more in the last few years and, and understand you know, the positive impact music can have on the early years and even through to teens. Oh, yes. First of all, we all love music. I mean, just most humans love some form of music, right? Um, and we love music because it is 
kind of a holistic kind of tool in our field. It, we, we believe it nurtures children's minds, uh, their bodies, their souls. We, we think music helps to lay a strong foundation um, for the future. Um, we have found, and, and I learned more of this visiting Carnegie Hall in New York, where we have a, a partnership with them around something called the Lullaby Project, but I learned more clearly how music supports cognitive development, uh, emotional development, social development, and even physical development. So um, uh, this partnership with Carnegie Hall very quickly uh, about the Lullaby Project, um, when I visited, um, I, I, I was invited to the International Lullaby Convening in New York at Carnegie Hall, and I saw teaching artists work with parents of, of new of new children, new babies, and they wrote, wrote a love, they wrote a, a letter filled with the love, the hope, the dreams for their new baby. A teaching artist helped them turn that into a song using, you know, into music, into a song, which they sung to that child. And so many benefits came out of this very emotional process that really happened over many days, uh, in most instances, um, benefit for the parent and the child. And we've heard stories of parents who couldn't even connect with their children in a specific way until they went through this process and were able then to better connect with their children. And so when I met with Clive Gillins and the artistic and executive director of Carnegie Hall, we decided to launch the Lullaby Project in children's museums. We now have over 50 children's museums that are, are, are making music, creating lullabies, working with teaching artists, um, and, and finding more joy in this work in our spaces. So we love music. We think music is so important for all those reasons that I, that I said. And, and even uh, as I visit children's museums, there are all kinds of musical instruments inside the museums for kids to play. Kids love to bang on things and, and a lot of percussion instruments, right? And even outside, many, many museums have outdoor spaces um, and, and those uh, instruments are inside and outside. So anyway, we love music and we think music will continue to be an important part of what we see in children's museums because it helps us to teach um, the things we want to teach, and it's just joyful. And children's museums are about creating playful, learning, joyful experiences for children and their families. It certainly is. Um, and Arthur, you mentioned there being outside and musical instruments outside. Um, and percussion play has definitely seen an increase in children's museums, embracing their instruments and putting them outside, placing them in out outside spaces. Is this a result of the pandemic? You, you were encouraged to play outside more, and now are museums really sort of thinking not just about their inside space, but their outside space? So I believe that, um, well, I know that some of this musical um, play inside and outside the museum, particularly outside, was happening before the pandemic. But the pandemic certainly did accelerate the intentional development of these um, outdoor spaces. Um, and which led to them thinking creatively about, okay, we can have, you know, a, a sand pit over here for kids to play in sand and we can have, you know, climber structures outside for kids to climb on. And oh, by the way, you know, let's have percussion instruments, let's have musical instruments outside for kids to play. I was in Santa Fe, um, New Mexico just a few months ago, and they opened a new outdoor space and a big part of that you know, was musical instruments. And I was in, um, I think it was, I don't know, a couple of other places where I, you know, I just recognized, wow, lots of musical instruments outside of the museum in these outdoor spaces. And I think the pandemic also reminded us that as much as we want to have, you know, we have the traditional indoor spaces in our museums that we want to, um, continue to expand outdoor spaces because, you know, kids and families just love being outdoors when the weather is, is good. They love being outside uh, and not necessarily inside. So I think this, um, uh, this will continue this growth of um, development and access to musical instruments and percussion uh, in particular, uh, but also more on the outside. And I'll just mention one other thing. I'm on the board of something called Playful Learning Landscapes. And this is an organization complementary to museums, but Playful Learning Landscapes helps communities build outdoor 
playful areas where, you know, kids, it could be near a bus stop, it could be in a schoolyard, it could be wherever, but, but to be more intentional about those spaces and some of those spaces as well are finding ways to, um, uh, to employ, you know, different modes of, of play and, um, and engagement, you know, to include percussion, play and musical instruments. Whilst in Wisconsin, we visited the Children's Museum in the city of Madison and saw firsthand how they harness the power of music on their rooftop garden. The museum's volunteer coordinator, Tim Gruber, explains how the children are able to independently explore the instruments. So I do kind of like a music program a variety of different things, some songs, some like kind of simple games. Most of the kids we get are pretty young just because of the museum. So, you know, we get two, three, four year olds, some older kids too. And so where I'm doing it is it's the uh, space called the Wonderground, the outdoor area in the back. And there's a part called the Down Under. So I'm in there and, you know, kids can, kids and families can just kind of drop in. <laughs> So I do some with just like the songs, but then I've also been trying to have kids play, you know, while we're singing. And then they can just play along. And I, I think kids are just really good at like um, playing and exploring the instruments. Kind of like if they were exploring a playground or something. In the case of the instrument, they explore the sound and, and uh, and then I'm out there a lot other times, and we also have them on the rooftop. And I notice kids just, you know, find them and start playing on their own. Sometimes um, if I go play something, then they'll either join in or after I go away, they'll kind of take over. It is nice because we have the one that's the two instruments that are kind of like, um, uh, they're like curvy and they're uh, next to each other. One's the duo. It's really nice. The one's metal. The other was, I think, I believe, like a synthetic kind of fiberglass or something. But it has, they both have a really nice sound. And, uh, you know, kids just enjoy the sound of them, too, and explore. Oh, yeah. you want me to jump? How do you want that sound? Oh, you want the chair? Can jump to me? Yeah. It's funny. Adults have this idea, oh, I'm, I'm not good at music or whatever, you know, because you know, they may have not taken lessons or know how to play songs really. Kids are just like, go and start hitting, you know. And the nice thing about these instruments is that they sound good, you know, when kids just hit. It's accessible because you can make a sound right away. Come over here. Yeah. He wants, he wants to yeah. Good job, yeah. Good job. Arthur, the executive director of the ACM, mentioned earlier how Santa Fe's Children's Museum has created a new outdoor play area. We brought together two women who have been influential in bringing music making to the museum's outside space. My name is Hannah Hausman. I'm the executive director of the Santa Fe Children's Museum. The Santa Fe Children's Museum um, is a nonprofit organization. We have been in existence for almost 40 years. We were founded in 1985 by four women educators who wanted to see something different from home and school. And so they created an informal, you know, uh, place of learning and play. And so um, 40 years later, we are um, one of three children's museums in the state of New Mexico, and we're the oldest children's museum. So we have actually quite a small museum. We're about 10,000 square feet inside. Um, but What's unusual is that we have an acre plus of playscape that is adjacent to the museum. The property uh, was originally an armory and owned by the military, which actually they still are our landlord, which is a, a unique, um, you know, partnership and collaboration. And so the building itself was a warehouse used for military use. So the outside was also part of that. And we redeveloped that space in the early 90s to be uh, exhibits and play spaces. And then most recently, which you all were a part of, we uh, went through a huge master plan renovation. And that was in partnership with the National Wildlife Federation and their arm called ECHO, which is Early Childhood Health Outdoors. 
we worked with SDV Construction, and we also had Surrounding Studio, a local landscape architect, come in and help us with the plan. So this new renovation uh, brought in um, about seven to eight new playscapes that, you know, are all around different types of learning. My name is Donna Ralph. I am one of the trustees on the board of directors of the Children's Museum. Music is integral to the development of a child's mind. It should be one of the first things that you introduce kids to, and most mothers and fathers do it instinctively by singing or clapping or anything like that. And so to me, it was natural to consider instruments as a part of it. The original uh, development had instruments on site as well. They had decayed over 35 years. And I wasn't about to leave the uh, museum without any. So after doing an uh, investigation and found percussion play, the colorful, creative shapes of the instruments um, just seemed natural to be a part of our outdoor scape. Percussion play was a Google search and there are a number of, not exhaustive, but a number of different firms that uh, offer similar styled instruments. And it was looking at the reviews, looking at the customer service, looking at the quality, looking at the quality of the tone as well, which for me was quite an important. Um, and that's how I ended up leaning towards percussion play and bringing it then to the board to consider as our, our main supplier. And the instruments were a combination. We had a, of many different factors from form to musical style, to the style of how the sound was created and what the child would hear back. There is minor tones, major tones, there, the larger tubular bells create, of course, a resonance that the children feel inside. They don't know why. They haven't heard yet about sound waves or physics, but it's their first experience and it's already built into it. So when it comes in school, they'll, they will kick in and say, yes, we have the, the chimes, the melodic cavatina, and then the pure percussive bongos. So it's all different styles colors, shapes, in order to, again, encourage the kids to go out, to play, to have fun. And then as a surprise in one corner, we put in the stepping stones. So as the children just simply run through the area, they suddenly create music. You know, children's museums inherently um, want the, the family to play together. So that's really important to us. You know, um, the learning experience starts with that. So the, this area, which we call Soundscape, has been um, really brilliant in helping to do that because we're seeing children of all ages and parents and caregivers of all ages kind of walking them through um, and meandering almost through this area, which um, we built it that way or designed it that way um, for a reason so that they could come in through either, either path. So we have like, you know, two ways they can come through doesn't matter which one because we, both are, are exciting and fun. Um, so we've seen that, which is really nice. So just, you know, organic, um, you know, play and interaction, which I love and, and love to observe. And then we have a little bit more structured. So, you know, we built this soundscape with a new amphitheater, um, which has been really special. And it's a covered amphitheater where performances can happen like the Santa Fe Symphony has come in. We've had um, the Tasuki Pueblo um, tribal dancers come in. We've had, so all sorts of, of music and performance has come through. And in tandem, the instruments have really, you know, aligned nicely with, with what we've done. So you might see a performance happening of marimba and the kids are actually playing on the percussion play instruments while that's happening. So there's some really nice, um, you know, play and experiences and memories happening at the same time. So that's what I've been observing since it opened in June, which is really sweet. And I might just add as well that one of the things about our soundscape area is it attracts the adults. Mm -hmm. Whereas they may or may not sit down in the sand play area 
and dig with their kids. They're in the soundscape and they're the ones playing the instruments yeah. and checking them all out. And that encourages their children to spend more time as well. Children's museums are places which have proven to provide children with vital interactions that help with foundational development. With more than 50 children's museums opening each year, we will surely be seeing more music and outdoor music making, helping create interactive and engaging child-centric environments that will benefit not only young people, but whole communities around the world. For more information on the impact of music and children's development, head to Percussion Play's website browse our white papers.